we're now ready to move on to Newton's third law. And Newton's third law is actually the shortest, but can also be one of the most confusing of the three laws. And Newton's third law simply says, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And essentially what this is saying is forces come in pairs. Anytime you exert a force on something, like a wall, you push on the wall, the wall pushes back at you. For instance, if you've ever gone ice skating, and you're ice skating with a friend and you push the friend, you can push your friend, and that will exert a force on your friend, and they'll go sliding in one direction. But you'll go sliding in the other direction. Same thing with a swimming pool. It's exa actually exactly how a rocket works. Oops. The rocket accelerates the fuel out of the back, creating a force in the backwards direction. And the fuel causes to exert a force on the rocket in the forward direction. So it gives this pair of forces with an equal force and an opposite force. And one of the very important things to note about this law is the force is exerted on a different object. It's the first of Newton's laws to discuss the interactions between separate objects. So when you push your friend on the ice skating rink, you exert a force on him. And the second force produced is exerted on you. So they're on separate objects. Same with the repulsion from the rocket or you pushing on a wall. And this is because if they were on the same object, you could have some very confusing situations. For instance, imagine you were trying to pull a box. You exert a force on the box, pulling it forward. Now if, the, now if the box exerted a force in the opposite direction on itself, then no matter how much force you applied, the forces would always cancel each other out, and you'd make no progress. So if you're getting that as you apply Newton's third law, it's probably because you're applying the forces wrong. Instead, you should remember it includes multiple objects. So if you exert a force on the box, the box will exert a force on you back. And that's why if you pull too hard on something that's too heavy, Instead of it going to you, you get pulled towards it. Now, one of the interesting things about this law is if you look, if every action produces a pair of forces in opposite directions, then what we'll notice is when we add all the forces together, every pair of forces adds up to zero. So actually, all the forces in the universe all add together to zero. And what this means is something's being conserved. And it doesn't make a lot of sense to say that force is being conserved. So instead what we say is we say momentum is being conserved. And we'll go over momentum in a little more detail later in later lectures, but this is just to show how this law impacts momentum. So to better understand momentum, let's imagine the case of a truck going down the highway. So as the truck drives along, it has some speed and a fair amount of mass because it's a big, heavy truck. There's our drawing of a truck. And it, to slow down, it needs to exert a force on something. So it wants to have a backwards force on it, it can put on its brakes, which will exert a forward force on the earth. But if it doesn't put on its brakes in time and hits a car, say, then it's exerting a forward force on the car in order to produce a backwards force on itself. And then this backwards, if it hits the car, because the car is smaller, it will produce a large acceleration on the car with a relatively small acceleration on itself. If it uses its brakes, the earth is so large that it will produce a tiny acceleration on the earth. And what we're noticing this means is in order for the truck to slow itself down, in order to produce a negative velocity, either it needs to create a small positive velocity in the earth or a large positive velocity in the car. And we talk about this as transferring its momentum. Its momentum is the combination of its velocity and its mass. And as it slows down, it transfers its momentum either to the earth or to other cars or to the air around it. And as a result, because Newton's third law allows us to look at how forces interact. It also allows us to drive new concepts such as momentum. So whereas the first two laws talk about forces on individual objects, this law specifically forces between objects. So these three laws will provide a broader understanding of physics and we'll go over how that is in the next lecture.